Hello guys, welcome back. This video is strictly focused on ISRO scientist engineer exam. Electromagnetic theory ISRO exam is the most important subject in ISRO exam. So without any further delay, let's get started. Let's start with Gauss law. Gauss law states that the net flux leaving through any enclosed surface is always equal to the charge enclosed by that surface. For example, if there is a positive charge plus Q and if we draw a surface around it which completely encloses the charge then the total flux leaving that surface would be equal to Q. We can apply Gauss's law to find the strength of electric field at any point due to any point charges or line charges or seat charges. For example, let's calculate electric field strength due to a point charge at a distance R. At first, we will draw a Gaussian surface. For making calculations easy, let's take an spherical surface whose center coincides with the charge. So according to Gauss law, closed surface integral of D is equal to Q enclosed. Here D is representing the electric flux density. So when we simplify this, we will get D into 4 pi r square equal to Q or D equal to Q divided by 4 pi r square and the direction would be radial outward. If we want to calculate electric field intensity, we can just divide the density with the permittivity of medium. Since we know that epsilon types intensity is equal to density. In the similar manner, we can calculate the electric field intensity due to infinite length line charge. If we have an infinite length of line charge having linear charge density as rho L, then we can consider a cylindrical surface as Gaussian surface. Then after applying Gauss's law we will get the closed surface integral of D is equal to Q enclosed or D into 2 pi rho h equal to Q enclosed. Here rho represents the radius of cylinder. We can calculate the enclosed charge by multiplying the height of the line charge inside the cylinder to the linear charge density of the line charge. So after simplification we will have electric field density D as rho L divided by 2 pi rho and the direction would be radially outward. Now let's discuss the most important formula in electromagnetic theory that is Maxwell equations. These formulae are being asked in almost all competitive exams. So be focused. For a static electromagnetic field the first Maxwell equation is closed surface integral of D is equal to Q. This equation is same as Gauss's equation. The second Maxwell equation is closed line integral of E equal to 0. This equation is same as Kirchhoff's voltage law. Third Maxwell equation is closed surface integral of B is equal to 0. And the fourth Maxwell equation is closed line integral of H equal to I. This equation is same as Ampere's law. These four Maxwell equations are in integral form. We can also see these four equations in point form. In point form, the first equation becomes the divergence of D equal to rho V, where rho V is volume charge density. The second equation becomes the curl of E equal to zero. It means electric field is irrotational and a third equation becomes the divergence of B equal to zero which means the magnetic field is solenoidal and the last equation becomes curl of H equal to J where J is current density. Now let's discuss about what are the boundary conditions for electric and magnetic fields. That is what happens to the electric and magnetic fields in terms of their strength and direction when they change medium. There are mainly two boundary conditions for electric fields and two boundary conditions for magnetic fields. Let's see all of them one by one. Let's take the case one when electric field incidence normally to the boundary. Let's we have the two different media with permittivity epsilon one and epsilon two where electric field E1 in medium 1 incidence normally to the interface between the two media and passes through medium 2 as E2. So now applying Maxwell's first equation that is closed surface integral of D equal to Q 
over any closed symmetric surface. So we have d2 dot delta s minus d1 dot delta s equal to rho s dot delta s where rho s is surface charge density. So after simplification we get d n1 minus d n2 equal to rho s where d n1 and d n2 are the normal component of electric field density in medium 1 and in medium 2 respectively. If surface charge is not there that is rho s equal to 0 then d n1 becomes equal to d n2. Now let's take the case 2 when electric field is parallel to the boundary. Here also let's we have the two different media with permittivity epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 where electric field E1 in medium 1 and E2 in medium 2 are both parallel to the interface between the two media. So here using Maxwell's second equation that is closed line integral of E equal to 0 over any closed symmetric line we will get E1 delta x minus E2 delta x equal to 0. After simplification we will get E t1 equal to E t2. Here E t1 and E t2 represents the tangential component of electric field in medium 1 and in medium 2 respectively. This expression shows the tangential component of electric field intensity is always continuous. The above discussed two boundary conditions were for the electric field and the next two are for the magnetic field. In the similar manner discussed above, we can find the third boundary condition as BN1 equal to BN2. That is the normal component of magnetic flux density is always continuous. And the fourth boundary condition as HT2 equal to HT1 plus K cross AN where K is a vector quantity and it shows the current per unit length. So if current per unit length equal to 0 then we can have HT2 equal to HT1. So that's all for today. अगर आपके कोई doubts हैं तो please comment में mention करना मत भूलिएगा और अगर आपको ये video अच्छा लगा हो तो please like, comment और subscribe जरूर करिएगा.